Hey, what's up? This is Professor Wergelis. We're here on my Amazon EC2 instance video series. This will be video number one, and we'll focus on how to create your instance using Amazon Web Services. Uh, I have my AWS console pulled up. You'll want to log in and sign into your account. Uh, up here on the right, you'll see different areas, different regions for the U.S., Usually you want to make sure that you select the one closest to you and each time you log in you want to make sure that you select the, the same one um, and we'll talk about why here in a little bit. They have a lot of different services that you can use. The main one we'll be focusing on is EC2 which is Elastic Cloud Computing. You should see it here. If you can't you can always type EC2 in to find it. Okay, if you're logging in for the first time, you shouldn't see any running instances. Uh, this is your dashboard here, your EC2 dashboard. And uh, why I talked about logging into the same region each time is because here you'll see I have zero instances. But if I switch over to North Virginia, okay, I have two running instances. So I've had students in the past, I'll tell them to terminate all their resources. And then a few months after the semester, they're still getting charged and they thought they terminate all the resources but actually they just terminated all the resources for one region so you want to make sure you log in the same region uh, that way that doesn't happen to you okay here I'm using Ohio as an example that way it looks like I am starting from a fresh profile uh, here you'll see the launch button okay we're gonna to want to launch an instance once we click the launch button you're gonna see your different operating systems uh, we have Linux, uh, Red Hat, Ubuntu, we have Windows Server if you're interested in Windows Servers and they have a variety of servers including deep learning servers uh, that have GPUs. For CS2830 we'll be mainly focused on the Amazon Linux AMI. They have a second version but this class we're going to use version 1 and that's because they have it's set up really nicely. They have command line tools such as Python, Java, uh, they have repositories like PHP, MySQL, and it just makes it really nice for developers uh, to set up really easily. Uh, later in my next video we'll be setting up a LAMP stack which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. We'll go ahead and select the Amazon Linux instance and here you'll see different types. We'll mainly be focused on the T2 T2 instances provide a baseline level of CPU performance with the ability to burst above the baseline. And also you'll see here we're choosing T2 Micro because it's free tier eligible. Free tier eligible is if as long as you do not use 750 instance hours each month for the first 12 months, then you will not be charged. So when you first create an account, you have a free tier account and that's free for the first 12 months as long as you don't go over 750 instance hours each month and as long as you have one instance running I've seen students leave that up the entire semester and uh, they didn't have a problem okay so I'll select the T2 micro click on next here are my instance details I can select the number of instance or the subnet uh, shutdown behavior I usually leave all of these values default so you can leave them default and go to the next, which is adding storage. Here you'll see the storage size default is 8. And one of the main things you'll want to make sure is that this checkbox is selected, delete on termination. Uh, this will ensure that when you terminate your instance, the volume associated with that instance will also be terminated. When I first started using Amazon AWS, this feature was not available and I terminated my instance and then each month went by and I was still getting charged and I didn't know why and it's because that volume was still associated with the instance I delete the instance but not the volume and uh, if you select this box it will make sure that that does not happen to you click on next we can add tags I'll usually add a name associated with my server that way I can know which server is which in my last page you saw two or three different instances running and uh, if I have names associated with them then I can know which server I'm selecting. So I'll add a name, CS2830, 
go to my security groups here is your firewall uh, basically your security group allows which ports can be open on your server the default port is 22 which is SSH uh, SSH allows you to connect to your instance through the terminal through the command line or putty or git bash we'll also want to connect to this instance via the browser so we'll want to open up port 80 and later we'll also be setting up HTTPS which is the secure HTTP as you transfer the data it will be encrypted okay here you'll see uh, it's custom but it's all zeros if I click anywhere it's the same so all of these are basically open to anywhere uh, but for the SSH you can only connect if you have your private key and we'll talk about that here in a little bit you might want to give your security group a name so we can call it CS2830 that way you know which security group is yours okay after you have opened up these ports you want to go ahead and review and launch here is just a overview of what we just did uh, you will want to make sure we have the AMI correct Amazon Linux that you have your instance type correct T2 micro uh, that you have opened up your ports that your security group is correct you might see some duplicate entries uh, don't be alarmed with this for the instance details we left them all default for the storage we want to make sure this is selected as yes and then for our tag we added a name that way we can know which server is which once everything looks good you'll go ahead and click the launch button and if you're launching for the first time uh, you won't see a key pair so if I have choose an existing key pair you'll see this message no key pairs have been found so here we're gonna need to create a key pair this key pair is a private key file it's a PIM file you want to know what PIM is for the exam uh, you're going to want to store this key in a secure location and one that you are able to access so you want to make sure it's a good location and secure uh, you will not be able to download this file again after it's created and what does that mean what it means is if you lose this file and let's say you're halfway through your final project uh, you will not have access to that server and there's a possibility that you can lose all of your work so what I like to tell students is to make sure you store this file somewhere safe maybe on the cloud or on a flash drive you're gonna want a backup copy of this file that way you do not lose it so here I'm calling it CS2830 key pair if you don't have a cloud account Mizzou has one you can have Google Drive or maybe you want to use the Mizzou cloud it's Missouri.box.com if you come here you're gonna use your same login as your MyZoo account so just your username password once you log in you'll get 50 gigabytes of free online storage as long as you're a student so here when I log in it looks similar to Dropbox you can share files um, upload files and uh, if you need cloud storage you can use the Mizzou box account so after I have that set up I'll go ahead and download the key pair make sure you store it somewhere good okay so I down to my local at this time as soon as I download it I usually go ahead and upload it to the cloud so I'll upload it to my box account make sure that I do not lose it uh, because if I do I won't have access to it so I'll upload to the cloud okay come back go ahead and launch the instance and Amazon's doing its thing so here you're gonna see some status and some uh, overall view of what's going on you can click view instances and it's going to be circling for a while what I like to do is click the refresh button and then it's ready to go or you can sit there let it run and uh, it might take some time you click the refresh button uh, it's ready to go so every time I uh, have my instance here I usually select it and I'm gonna pull up my connect page this page is important it tells you how to connect to your instance via SSH it gives you your public DNS name uh, so we can access our server from the web browser you can see here the command that we need to use uh, we need to SSH we need to include our key pair uh, 
usually you'll change directory into where your key pair is stored. You'll see here that the user is called EC2 user. Whenever you create an instance, this keyword here in front of the at symbol is usually the username that's the default username they created for you. And then you'll see your public DNS, uh, which is how I can SSH. Okay, uh, congratulations. You've successfully started your instance, you've created your instance, and you're you have a server running on Amazon AWS and uh, in my next video we will connect to that server and configure it uh, by installing a LAMP stack on it. If you have any questions you can ask me or the TAs. You can also leave a comment below and we'll see you in the next video.